I don't know how long this is going to last, but here we are. We just arrived in Poland on a grey sky, but it's not raining. And we just actually go and found a restaurant here. We're going to eat some, what are they called? Dumplings. I don't know what this little square is, but it looks like a little foodery. But yeah, let's go and eat. Where's our little restaurant here? So if the weather holds out tomorrow, we might go to Auschwitz. Israelis sharing food, not that one. Here's our little restaurant. Okay, see you later. Dumplings. Polish beer. Yeah, let's eat. Okay, what are we having here? We're having pancakes with beef, beef stew, chicken dumplings, some mushroom beef soup with dumplings. Okay, this is going to taste great. Let's get stuck into it. Here we are, some markets. Old, old wares, old mm, antiques, knives, birds. That's a that decent looking knife. It's alright. Rings. Nice little square. And there goes the Zagreb tram. Very similar to Zagreb actually, this place. With uh, a little bit more graffiti on the walls. I'm stuck behind those two, but I'll get there. Here we go. Uh, it's 3.30 and it feels like 5.30 because the sun's totally gone down. It's blistering cold. There's this tram there, just about to take us out. This is some sort of castle. Don't know what sort. But it's pretty huge. So yeah, it is some sort of castle, but you've got huge walls there. But apparently we're going down there, so let's go see what's what's down there. I think they're looking for a bar. Okay, we've got somewhere interesting. Some large square, looks like there's markets ahead. And there's a lot of kebab places here, I've noticed. A lot of kebab places. Everyone's selling kebabs. Except that place. Okay, so what do we have? Some of the local delicacies. What do we have here? Donuts. Seven zlotis. So that's probably about two dollars. Two dollars fifty. Not bad. A monkey just for one of those soon. So warm up and a coffee. Oh, nice little decorations. Actually, they're probably restaurants. Place to sit and eat. Oh, this is a lovely large square. This is this is what travelling is: seeing sights, tasting new food, and getting cold. Some sort of large bell tower, cathedral, or whatever you want to call them. It's a big one. There's a horse drawn car carriage. Mm, you can really smell horse. Let's see, rather big horses. Actually, Krakow has turned out to be a nice little gem here. Beautiful little spot. I need to go get some uh, Polish uh, water somewhere. Find a little place to buy some Polish water. Maybe the colourful stuff. I'm talking about vodka. Today we are going into the castle of W A W E L. Wale. Wale. Or something like that. Just trying to find out how we get up there. 
It's actually a nice day today. Looks hopefully no rain. Okay, just about the edge of the castle. There's some guy on a horse. It's a big church. As they always have a church. Walk down these paths. Let's go inside. It's nicely uh, decorated. It's funny. It's like the little sections. Have them up and put their little roof on. A little part of the building. Probably the old ruins and gardens. Actually, I must say I'm more impressed with the sun coming out. Makes everything look pretty. And cool. Nice architecture. Actually, this is actually rather a large city. Uh, into the sun. That's the other side of the tower. Okay, lunchtime. Then what did I get? I went to this place. They seem to be everywhere, some sort of bakeries. And have a, got a nice view of scaffolding. And here's my lunch. It's about 28 of theirs, whatever that means. Some sort of apple crumble and some sort of salmon cheesy thingy. Okay, time to eat. Okay, we're walking through Krakow. Same place we walked yesterday, last night, but just has a different view, has a different atmosphere to it. It's actually nice streets. Nice old church. That's a beautiful looking church. Okay, we're off to some museum. Catch us later. This has actually become one of my favorite little stores. Look at all your classical little donuts. The seventh and eighth floppy. Filled with marmalade, Nutella. Great stuff. Great with the coffee. There's a fine girl who actually works there. Good on her. Oh, so we've hit the square. Okay, we're in the Museum of Krakow. Some negativity. Not very exciting. But let's just go down the stairs here. Thank you. Oh, that's nice. This one's a little bit more interesting. Medallions. No, that's a lance or a spear. More weaponry. Okay. Couldn't wear high heels here. That's a little story of Krakow. In oh, that's very Croatian. Oh, I've got to get hit. Uh, 
we just left the uh, the old fort part just walking through the streets actually nice buildings here love the buildings that's a nice statue stall yeah nice pizzas oh we got some alcohol there cheaper cheeses this is actually a french stall so yeah, let's go check it all out. Get your breads. The meats are pretty, pretty inexpensive actually. I'm curious. I wouldn't want to actually try some of that stuff. Why is it say? Looks good. I might get myself a piece. But we'll continue on. It's a decent store this one. Here we are in the cheese section. 100 grams for three zloty, which is probably about a dollar ten. So everything's sold in 100 gram units. Got some nice greeny looking cheese. Wasabi, interesting. Okay. Chicken. Delicious little cakes here and there. 16 zloty. Oh, donuts. Two zloty, which is about 80 cents. Oh, they're my favorites. Do like those. Okay, we're in our favorite section. Well, my favorite section. There's a 700 ml gym beam. And you get two glasses for, how much was it? 26 bucks? That's pretty not bad at all. So prices are much cheaper in Australia in regards to alcohols. So we have a vodka here for 29, which is, what's that? How much is it for 29? That's bugger all there, right? Look, hopefully it's not full. That's where we're going. I don't want to try to say, oh my goodness, it's full. God, okay. Let's push in. Okay, we're back at the restaurant. Part two, we're having a, I'm having my beef, what's my, what's beef stew with sauerkraut. Gab's having, what are they, stuffed cabbage cabbages? Rolls. Cabbage rolls. and what's yours? Beef and bacon and onion. Oh, okay. So let's see what this tastes like. Can you see me? Tomato, -y. not bad. Yeah, Let's enjoy this mood. meal. Okay, here we are on the train going to the salt mines. Actually, very nice train. It's got a little TV thing. Comfortable seats. Panoramic views. Yeah. And it costs us 39 zloty return. That's where we're going to the salt mines. Nice little village. So, we're going down to the salt mine. We'll have to, it's not a collapse collapsing. Well, this is a, one of 300, 400 steps we have. we're going to walk all the way down. How far? Oh, yeah, that's a, that's a good long way down. Okay, we've got a traffic jam. <coughs> well, they used to get down there by rope, apparently. <laughs> Okay. 
going deeper into the salt mines. The statues are made from salt. Ah, sledge and go. How can I take it with me to Poland? I thought while looking at a salt mine that my father gave me as a wedding gift. I left my homeland for Krakow, where I was to marry Prince Boleslaw. Some larger chamber. Special question uh, for ladies because you love vegetables. To be sick. <laughs> mm. One of the chambers, beginning of the 19th century. And we got to a chapel underground. 1860. Oh, that looks okay. Oh, that's the main chamber. Only all the chandeliers and making salt. Apparently, this, you can hire this place and hold a, a wedding here. Everything's made out of salt, carved out of this wall. Nice chandeliers. There's the cardinal. See, everything's car carved out of the walls, and everything is salt. That's one of the uh, popes, I think. Cardinal. Is here on Sundays. Christmas tree with chunks of salt on it. Nice. It's rather 3D, but carved it in pretty deep. Probably made a few mistakes because once you make a mistake. You gotta go deeper. Well, this is a large chamber. This chamber. The walls are nice and level. And then we come to the kiosk section of the mine. Another chamber. The grotto. The grotto. Boy, there's some timber here. There's a lot of these chambers around. Got into a huge chamber. I don't know if you can see this. Oh, there's a lift. We're going to go up. So. Oh, this is the actual, probably the most famous uh, of the salts, the blue rock salt. This is rather nice. I wonder what it tastes like. Besides salt. More salt. And more salt. Well, that's okay. Apparently, the salt takes over the wood and everything and petrifies it and makes it harder. So, the salt is actually um, 
timber here, a lot of logs are actually covered in salt and they've done a study or something and um, yeah, some of this wood is very well preserved. Let's go in one of those chambers there. This, so we'll go this way now. And of course whenever you exit an exhibition, museum, you always exit through the gift shop. Do some of the salt looks like, okay? Salt. All this, all this is salt. All this. Oh, it tastes like lots of salt. So this mine, like I said before, 700 years old and still producing salt till today. This is a nice room. Oh, food. What's for lunch? Oh, pasta, pork knuckle, chips. And this is probably the brightest room here. The auditorium. It's actually huge. It can hold concerts here or do whatever, all carved out of the salt that's around here. Pretty impressive. Okay, we've exited the mines, went up the lift. It took us 130 meters into uh, to the surface and now we're off to the railway station. Pretty good little museum or exhibition or whatever you want to call it. Um, well worth seeing. So yeah, this is a little town. Just walking back towards the station. <laughs> and here we are, little artesian sugar place in Krakow. And I got myself a muck, or shall I say, poppy seeds. What does this taste like? Mm. Yep, the best. Better than your mother's. Mmm, equal. Here we are at Auschwitz. This was originally a camp used to um, hold Polish prisoners, doctors, lawyers, everyone, anybody of any education. But more and more people started coming in, so they started building more and more camps. Executing 300 people per day, that wasn't enough, so they ended up building more gas chambers and crematoriums. But in total, 1.3 million people were processed here, and 1.1 million were killed, exterminated. So, yeah, very sad place. So, there's quite a few, I think there's something like 40, 48 blocks here so that survived. Apparently 20 tons of this Cyclone B is used and these are some of the empty containers. <coughs> so, some artificial limbs taken from prisoners, 
soldiers. We just saw four tons of human hair. Just, just left behind. <laughs> Thousands of people would sleep in these barracks. And basically, didn't turn, couldn't turn, couldn't do anything. Just slept in one position all night. And these were nice actually they got slept on straw as you can see. This is block ten and there's block eleven. These were the two most most brutal where they conducted our experiments. Uh, dominantly Jewish women um, they used to uh, basically do gynecological experiments on them and if they died which was well to the SS Gestapo that was a good thing because then actually they could uh, do an autopsy on them and do more experiments so yeah this is not a good place to be This was called the death block, block 11. So this is what you generally see in the movies. Yeah, the tower, guard tower, electric fence, the halt sign. So not only did you have to actually jump or get through that fence, you had to get through the, over the wall also. So yeah. But people did actually escape, so they did escape, but if you did escape and there was a count and there was one person short, they used to kill 20 people, others. So escaping was good for the escapee, but not for the ones who were left behind. This is basically the gallows. <laughs> they used to have the roll calls. Actually, roll calls used to last 20 hours in the cold, in the wet. Say, so, there was a count. If you were, weren't in your uh, cell by a certain time, you'd come here and get hanged. Incredible. Yeah, the whole thing about this place is uh, what the Gestapo used to do was for the SS 
Let's keep everything secret. Everything was a secret. So this is uh, the only remaining crematorium gas chamber at Auschwitz and it's actually a rather small one apparently only 700 or so could be exterminated at any one time which is still a lot of people um, yeah all the other ones were destroyed or collapsed mm. okay we're off to Auschwitz 2 Birkenau Probably the most famous looking entrance to the Auschwitz camps that, that everybody's familiar with. Um, basically, if you came here, you came here to die. Nothing else. The other ones, you may, maybe had a chance of actually surviving, but here you actually came here to get exterminated. So let's go see what's happening in there. We're in Birkenau. There's just quite a few camps left. I don't know if they're extermination camps or just housing camps. Basically that's where you came through. And there's more camps or well, accommodation. Okay, a little bit of information. Um, of the swats, wood timber barracks that are standing, there's only 20 left. And of the brick barracks, there are 40 left. They're actually at one stage, there were 300 buildings here. But most of them were destroyed either by the Soviets, by the Allies, or by the local people here. So you can see only chimneys are standing these days. So 300 and M apparently that wasn't going to be enough. Well, they were meant to build triple that. About 2,000 um, well not triple, actually not even triple, that's actually even more than triple. Uh, they were meant to actually build is one of the original um, train carriages. This actually held up to, well actually held 80 people in this carriage for up to three, four days without any food, more toilet breaks or nothing. And that's the only air you got air vents, that's it. And then you came out here, most a lot of them died, and you basically came out here, pregnant women and children were sent straight to the gas chambers over there. And uh, anyone else was uh, killed elsewhere. But you basically came here to die. Okay, so this is basically the crematorium. Um, they usually buried, I think they said about 1,200 victims uh, a day. There was one on that side and one on that side. So, yeah, massive murder. Um, yeah, another point I just found out was in one two month period, 320,000 Hungarian Jews were killed in the two month period. So that was massive amounts of death. What the Nazis did, huh? Oh. These were probably bombed by the Russians or the, or the Allies. And all the ashes and bone fragments and everything, anything left over from the bodies was dumped in some river down the road and there's actually still remnants of bone over there. Uh, so basically this is a, just a large graveyard at the moment. The destroyed camps. Basically, what they used to look like. There's 20, well, actually, was it 40? 40, 40 of the brick ones. Oh, basically, this used to be right in this side, but here used to be the town. But the town was actually all the poles were kicked out of the town, and all the bricks 
and the houses were used to build these concentration camps and from this which is about 20 or 40 of them a lot most of them were actually now ruined walking okay, inside a camp instead of from a lower level, so just the ground with some kind of foundation. And in this uh, camp was very big lack of mattress in the So basically 700 people were sleeping in these, in these barracks. These were made by vandals, not uh, the people here. Dark. I can't imagine no ventilation, no nothing. Seven hundred people just cramped up in here. So I'm presuming these bricks were taken from the villages around. Okay, we're leaving Auschwitz to Birken, Birken, Birkenau. I think Birkenau. Ah, uh, yeah. Well, here we are, finally leaving Auschwitz to Birkenau. Basically, the gates of hell, as I as I, uh, the tour guide said. Also, actually, some people even said that it was actually the gates to heaven because they knew they were going to die. They're going to go meet meet and greet their loved ones. place of horror. Okay, we're on the train to Warsaw. And as you can see outside, it's very cold. Snowing in fact, or well, probably not snowy, but ice on the ground. Nice little houses. Yeah, everything's covered in snow. Even the trucks. made it to Warsaw and what's it doing it's it's snowing snow air it's it's cold pigeons don't seem to mind they're always in here in Poland so we're off to the holiday inn everything's got ice on it that's cool. Not too bad. I'm enjoying it so far. Okay, we're in Old Town in Warsaw. Seems like there's a bit of a parade, some sort of carnival. A lot of people out for a very cold day, but I guess you got no choice. Either stay home in front of the heater or come outside and enjoy the atmosphere. Snow on the roofs. Nice little old town. Just looking for some lunch. I don't know if you can see if we've got a red face, but it is pretty chilly. Got snow falling on me.
nice tonight with new lights on it. No. It's a great little place. Okay, this is the town square of, of Old Town. Well, some I'm not exactly sure, but we are in Old Town. For part, it doesn't really matter. Be very, this is going to be look very nice at, at night time, at 3.30 in the afternoon. I don't see a monkey, mate. It's not real. Oh, there's people ice skating. I'm after a hot chocolate. I don't want no mulled wine. Everyone's drinking mulled wine. Don't enjoy it. Something about the wine, the hotness and the herbs. Not right. Let's have a look at these skiers here. Please stop and change direction. Right. Where they go? Still snowing slightly. Apparently right, tonight's going to be about 11 degrees, so yeah, looking forward to that. Walking around here at night time. Catch you later. Got my tripe soup. Gab's got chicken noodle. What'd you get? Broth? Some sort of broth. But I'm enjoying my tripe. So I'll catch you later. Okay, we're having lunch at that place. And I'm having a sausage. So we have my tripe soup. Gab's having something. Oh, and we're going to enjoy this and talk to you later. See ya. And we are walking around Warsaw on a cold Sunday morning. Train station's behind me. And we've got this nice little big, huge building. Looks a bit like the Empire State Building. Well, part of it, anyway. Huh. That's not bad. So this is Warsaw. I think that's the uh, the city part. A lot of ice, a lot of graffiti, which you've noticed a lot in Poland. There's a lot of ice around. These all dead. We're going off to that shopping center, but I don't think it's open. There's no shops are open on Sundays for some reason. So that should be over. I, th I heard the museums are open. So yeah, we're off to that shopping centre. So hopefully something's open. Or, uh, if not, we'll just get back to the hotel and drink. Hey, right, catch you later. Yeah, we're walking around the shopping centre and this is actually a rather unique cinema. Pretty cool looking. Which of the seats are not as dirty as uh, the ones at Penrith. We'll go check out, see what's playing today. I wonder if it's all in Polish. But let's go check out the food court. You got premium burgers there. Max. It's actually a ni nice little uh, shopping centre. It's actually good to be out of the cold, the blistering cold. It's actually minus 11 today, or minus 10, sorry. But it's a sunny day. Snow everywhere. Or frost or whatever you want to call it. Berlin kebab. The usual. Burger King. Subway. KFC. Quite sure there's a McDonald's around here somewhere. Look over the edge. Very impressive shopping centre. Makes uh, Penrith Plaza look a bit shit. 
Right. Here we are walking the streets of Warsaw again. This is the three o'clock in the afternoon. It's minus 11 degrees. Blue skies, but the chill, my goodness, I've never felt it before. My face feels like it's gonna fall off. <coughs> and Bonnie's like, I've got nice thermals underneath, covered up well, but try to wear, try not to wear gloves. Don't know how you can do it. Ah, oh, just ice is still everywhere. It's, you wouldn't think it's 11 degrees, minus 11 degrees. Oh, well, we're back to our, going back to our hotel. Catch you later.